Okay, now let's discuss um, one of the well established CNN, which is AlexNet. Okay, we just discussed it roughly. We don't want to go deep into the detail on the architectures. Okay, okay, that is the exam. That is the AlexNet architectures. As you realize that. Okay, again the input. Uh, the input image okay again uh alexnet is designed for image again that's why the input is the image so the image there the size must be 227 times 227 of course time 3 as a depth size okay that's mean if you let's say you want to apply alexnet to your to, to implement the alexnet into your application then if you capture image which is different size uh, 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 with with the with the different size uh, as compared to this input si input I size image of AlexNet, then you need to resize your image or you need to shrink your image. If you capture too big, then you need to shrink or resize your image into two to seven times two to seven. Okay, because it's only support uh, that size of image. And again, uh, the format is the depth is equal to three. Then meaning that the AlexNet uh, support. Uh, the the color image only, but that does not mean you cannot apply it for grayscale image. Uh, there's a tricky behind behind it because um, uh, actually uh, uh, my my previous FYP also uh, implement this AlexNet. Okay, but I'm using grayscale still can be done by using AlexNet. But you need to uh, do some tricky things first to 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 make sure that your grayscale become uh color format image okay but uh, originally alexnet is designed for color image so that's why uh, a color image with the size 227 times 227 so that's why if you uh, you want to implement this for color image is it, it it should be suitable for you because because actually the input uh, here should be color image with the size 227 times 227 so you can see there the first approach and uh, the first operation is a convolutional layers there so you have a 11 time 11 that is refer to the um to what to the what is this 11 times 11 is what this is the filter size 11 time 11 and then the strike equal to 4 okay so uh, from there then you can you can estimate the why it you, at the after you apply the convolutionals there it will shrink into 69 you can count it 11 times 11 um and then um strike equal to 4 then i, I hope you can count is it is it uh, how actually from that you can produce the 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 size is uh, at the end uh, I'm sorry. So, sorry. Uh, the size of the at this convolutional layer, this the filter size is eleven time eleven, and then you have stride equal to four, and then uh, this ninety six is not um, is is actually is number of number of filter meaning you have a sixty six filter of 11 times 11 so if you have a 66 filter 11 times 11 with stride equal to 4 of course uh, you will produce the depth there equal to 96 because of the filter size equals to 96 but how actually you can compute 55 and 55 so can you try to, to estimate that can you try to estimate that how actually you can uh, produce that 55 times 55 according to that uh, this AlexNet architectures okay you can see that that's how it's uh, actually they count it okay 227 minus 11 divided by 4 because you jump uh, 4 step ahead so that's why you need to divide into 4 and then plus 1 and then you can see that 227 minus 1 here uh, when you when there's no Padding mention that mean no padding. Okay, if there's no padding element mentioned in this convolutional layer, meaning there's there's no padding. 
So meaning that if you apply 11 times 11 without no uh, without no padding, then the image will shrink. Okay, and then uh, it shrink and again because your stride is more than uh, one, it will keep shrink. So that's why the 25 to 27 from the 227 times 227 it shrink into 55 times 55. Okay, because you you there is a two ele there, there's a two element make the size shrink. One is because of no padding. Another one because you are your jumping size is equal to four or your stride size is equal to four. Okay. Okay. Um, I will try to explain the how actually we can how can we calculate the volume of this one instead of you are using uh, this formula. Okay, it's better for you to uh, to to go to the the the, the previous slide that uh, the the summarization slide because that is the 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 general formula to estimate the volume of the output matrix after apply the convolution here. But you need to remember that the spec of your convolution layer, yeah, the parameter involved there, uh, uh, the description of your convolution layer. Now the convolution layer in this area. The size of the window or the, the, the filter is 11 times 11 and the number of filter is 96 stride equal to 4 because there's, n there's a no information about the padding then we that's why we assume no padding okay in this stage there's no padding so if you want to know how actually you can calculate this one how ac actually the size is sh have been shrinking into from 27 to 55 here we already discussed that uh, in the previous slide but uh, of course if you very is it, is it if this is difficult for you to count you can use the the general formula this is more easy okay go back to the general formulas there where is the general formula for this convolutional uh, layer where you also consider the padding as well as uh, stride there in your conventional op in your conventional layer i think it should be this slide yep this this one okay this is a this summarization represent the formulas how to calculate that okay i just show you one is one example which is related to the first convolutional layer of uh neural new, uh, of of your alex net okay later you can try also the other layer in inside the AlexNet architectures okay I just show you okay um, again uh, if you remember AlexNet at the the, the 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 slide that the I show uh, that I show in in because I don't want to open that slide is too far at the end of this uh, my my slide not so we I, we just focus on this if you remember AlexNet the the input size there is 227 so that's why the input volume metric should be 227 times 227 times 3 so your W1 equal to 227 H1 equal to 27 and your D1 equal to 3 and then K K is represent the number of filter so again the that convolution involve 96 96 filters so 96 number of filters so that's why your k equal to 96 and then uh, what is f f is uh, represent the filter size because your the filter size there is 11 times 11 so your f equal to 11 and then your stride in that conventional layer is equal to 4 and another one is padding since uh, there's no padding information about that convolutional layer so there's no padding operation involved so, so that's why you put the p equal to zero and then once you get all this information in order you to estimate what is the output dimension in term of your width there w2 okay uh which i i think which there is a x axis size okay h here is a y axis size so d d there is when the depth which is z axis size so just to find the output width there i just show you one example later you you can compute all w2 h2 as well as d2 okay for w2 you apply this formula okay this is the formula and then i just fill in 
the numbers in this formula this is the numbers that I fill in at the end I get 55 so later you can compute the H2 ok uh, you will also get the 55 there and then about the D2 again it depend on the number of filter K so that's why D2 equal to K which is equal to 69 so that's why the volume after do the convolutional operation uh, the first convolutional layer for LXNet the volume the volume size of input image is 2 to 7 times 2 to 7 times 3 after the first convolutional layer it become 55 times 55 times 69 okay so that's how we calculate that okay so I just show you that one example okay that is the uh, how it's it can be you can calculate the 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 output uh, volume size or the 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 size of matrix of uh, the, the size of the output matrix after the convolutional then later you can try on this one okay Ma uh, maximum pooling of course the maximum pooling you need to use the the general formula of pooling uh, layers okay don't use the convolution layer otherwise you don't get the the answer that you, then you will go into that okay okay for this this one you can try the f the general formula for convolutional op uh, the convolutional operation if the input size is 27 times 27 times 96 how do you get 27 times 27 times 256 okay uh, if you see there the padding equal to 2 uh, because the filter size is 5 times 5 and the padding equal to 2 means that the size is maintained okay 2 to 7 times 2 to 7 2 to 7 times 2 to 7 Okay, the one which is in, uh, changing is the depth size. The depth size is 256 is because the number of filter is equal to 256 here in this conventional layer. So that's how it's work. Okay, normally uh, uh, there's uh, there's no standard way to to describe the architecture. Sometimes people people try to you know to draw it in this way so it's easy for you to interpret because you already see the you know you already see the volumes there or the, the the pictures of the input matrix and the output matrix so it's easy for you interpret sometimes people not not using this uh, representation they are using this description in order to uh, represent the the architecture of your cnn this is the how you write uh, or the, the the architecture in text to represent the architecture of LXNet. Okay, first is input two to seven two to seven times three. So this one is referred to this one. This the, the the second layer which is convolutional. The first convolution layer. That's why they call it convolution number one. So the convolution number one. Then uh, you have sixty nine filter with the filter size eleven times eleven at stride equal to four padding equals to zero means that no padding okay uh, this dimension is just show you the output after this operation okay that is also another standard way i i, I don't call it a standard way because there's no standard way to the to to represent the network architecture sometimes people drawing some people doing in text okay but if you are doing in text it's better for you especially if you want to translate this into programming because later in programming uh, in order for you to write the architectures you you must know each and every layer what are the spec so so if you know the spec then easy for you to write the code because the the, the code if you are using the the well established library then the, the it's it's almost the, the the structure is almost similar like what you write over here in 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 human uh upon in human um readable format okay i can just consider this tag as a human readable format so if you apply some library i think for those who might have experience programming the deep learning uh, uh, one of the easiest uh, if you are programming using python uh, one of the easiest library to design the uh, cnn is by using the keras so the keras uh, structure 
it's it's similar to what we write over here meaning that you need to you know uh, call the the layer and then you need to imp key in all the argument there or the, all the param input parameter that describe the spec of that layers okay you must mention is you 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 want to design a convolutional layer with 66 number of filter the size of filter is 11 times 11 strike equal to 4 and no padding so that is the element that you need to know okay so that's why uh in in term of human interpretation is better is better to see in this type of architecture where you uh, in this representation where you see all the picture all the the process involved but in term of writing the programming then this one quite be better because once you know the spec you just write it in 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 uh, that programming language then you can have your your filters there okay so i think uh, uh, you can just check back there okay this is the first convolution layer that's why they call it convolutional one and then this is the first maximum pooling layer so that's why they call it maximum pooling number one and then the filter size is three times three of course uh, maximum pooling you don't have many number of filter because the filter itself don't have a filter coefficient just the size and then uh, again I, like I said before it's very rare to to see maximum pooling layer consist of uh, padding okay normally we just see the stride okay that's why there's a there's, there's, there's only stride but there's no padding normally padding is designed specially for for convolutional and then uh, normalization layer again this is also referred to the uh, batch normalization you can see that uh, they they are applying the normalization is after after the pooling uh, layers but uh, but uh, again this is alexnet like i said um, because they, they 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 find out might be in in, in during the design the 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 alexnet they find out uh, the best way to to normalize is at this level but like i mentioned in 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 when i discuss about batch normalization uh, later when you design from scratch normally people will put a batch normalization is either after this convolution or uh, convolutional layer or inside the convolutional layer which is between the convolutional operation and activation function okay uh, you put the 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 batch normalization at in, in between that or or in or you can also put after the activation uh, activation function which is after the conventional layer so that is the two position where people try to put a batch normalization but because this is the well established architecture so that's why uh, you can see that the normalization also sometimes they can also put any uh, any any position that they don't want but later you in our syllabus uh, if you talk about batch normalization uh, just focus on batch normalization is always uh, involve is it uh, either in inside the convolutional layer which is between the convolutional operation and activation function or you can also put after the activation function okay so you have a normalization layers and then this is a second pooling layers and then uh, you have another norm normalization layers and then i think this one should be the last one before you have a fully connected layer no no this one yeah we have yeah this one is convolutional number three you have one two three okay i think uh there's um yep there's a convolutional layer three times three okay uh, i think this one is not complete okay you have a convolutional number one convolutional layer number two this one number three so this is number three this is number four number five and and you can see that it will end up with fully connected layer which is fc here there's a two fully connected layer there fc fully connected layer fully connected layer before you decide the you you, you decide what type of you you, you decide uh, what actually this image is it okay or the output uh, or the output here is a label of this image okay but uh, alexnet is actually uh, the output 
consists of il uh, 1000 classes meaning that you put any image it will give you the label of this image where the label of the image can be either one of this level uh, 1000 label or 1000 classes so that is the alexnet uh, uh, the, the the architecture of alexnet okay original uh, well established alexnet the input is 227 times 227 times 3 and the output is 1000 which depend which which represent 1000 classes of image okay meaning that the input is image it will classify this image is uh, suitable to be label uh, in this in this 1000 classes which which uh, this image belong to in this 1000 classes okay so uh, it had been introduced in 2012 and then uh, again this is uh, we're talking about uh, one of the largest and well-known data set which is known is as a image net okay i think image net uh, at that time i think at that time or because it keep updating the data set okay but for alexnet it have been trained with image net where this image net consists of almost 6 million image okay meaning that you have a 6 million data set consists of 6 million sample or 6 million image and from this 6 million image uh, uh, it uh, this 6 million, 6 million image have been labeled with 1000 class or have been labeled with 1000 label so that's why when they designed the alexnet the output there consists of 1000 output that represent 1000 classes so so that's why uh, this can be considered alexnet can be considered as one of the well established architecture because of course to you know you have a 6 million image and then by applying alexnet do some training and alexnet managed to perform uh, provide the high performance classification even of course uh, is it's a top five error i think uh, yeah in 2012 by reducing a top five error okay from 36 to 50.3 percent and then of course by having you know a huge number of uh, image and have a capability to identify and classify according to 1000 classes that that's make the alexnet become a well established cnn of course uh, after that it uh, is already have been beat by many uh, new well established uh, well known cnn such uh, such as google net vg16 vg19 uh, i think there's a mobile net as well uh, and so on okay so of you, you can even see that how actually they have been trained okay alexnet was trained in 6d okay simultaneously by using nvidia geforce gtx 580 GPU, GPU so I think the latest uh, you know latest budget laptop uh, we have that that spec you can you know you, you can do that but you need to uh, make sure that you don't turn off your computer for 6 day uh, uh, I'm sorry you cannot do that because at that time 580 GPU is they are using a double means that you have a, they, they, they put a two graphic card in the motherboard 5582 uh, you have a two graphic card gtx 582 on your motherboard then you can do what uh, this lx do in in order to produce it to produce the lx net okay and even you need to have a big memory because you have a six million image so at, at the end they produce the what we call the lx net then they they share with us to the community so you can you know to, to borrow the alexnet to do other application later i will i will show you example because um in in in, in programming later i will show you in in order for you to to develop c uh, application related to cnn you can uh, you can make it in you can develop in two way one is you can develop from scratch meaning that you are designed uh, your own architecture one by one and then before you can train by you to solve your problem another one is you can borrow the architectures the well-established cnn architecture like cnn or other new 
well performant architecture to solve your problem so that is the 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 best uh, approach in applying CNN because uh, you don't have to have a powerful computer to do it because you, once you borrow the AlexNet uh, for example AlexNet is already have been trained and have a capability to classify 1000 classes then if you want to solve your application which is small and not challenging as compared to uh, this uh, this 6 million image from the ImageNet data set so of course image AlexNet have a uh, high capability to solve that okay because because AlexNet is more than that can do more than that so if you just want AlexNet to solve your small problem of course for sure that AlexNet can do it okay I, I, we will discuss that later